Peter Rogers. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm very, very well. Well, I say I'm very well. A little bit hungover. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Don't know what time it is because I've been doing Australian Open mm. uh, or Australian tennis for a month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if I sort of glaze off at some point in the distance, you actually like pass out. Yeah. That's so if the one eye starts flickering, yeah. just like it's nothing to do with your chat. No, all the watches. <laughs> all the watches. Yeah. It's it's purely because I've been oh doing nights God. for a month. So this is my yeah. first day off. Well, the funny thing is, is that we've honestly been threatening to do this for mm. at least a year, where we said, hey, you know what? Wouldn't it be great if we had a pod? And then I was like, hey, you know what would be really great is if we had the pod and we had the YouTube running at the same time. And now we've got the amazing Brit who's come on board to film it all. Who is fantastic. First month, January uh, 2023. Um, and we're actually bloody doing it, which is Finally. just fantastic. <laughs> and in many ways, it's <laughs> dangerous because it just means more watches, more money, more fear, <laughs> and more anxiety. And the, the timing that, you, you, that we've now done for this as well, mm. because when you sort of said, oh, let's do this, mm. I was like thinking, okay, that's cool. And then you were sort of saying, yeah, we can talk about each other's watch journey. Yep. And I kind of thought, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm always looking at something or, or thinking, well, what can I buy or what? And then obviously the last two months, which we'll get into, have just been a, well, I'm now thinking all oh, my money's you're, gone. You're, Why have you chosen? You're in deep, you're in real deep. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> and that's kind of what's given us the impetus to come up with the theme that we've got. Mm -hmm. Because um, in essence, we're taking our conversations, which you know, many people out there will have this as well, where you've got your friends, you, you watch friends, and um, you, know, you might have your bike friends, your cigar friends, your whoever friends, but you, you, you always tend to, you tend to gravitate around them for support, for purchases, for regrets, for fears. For the illness that for we the all illness. have. Yeah. And yeah. in many ways, what we're, what, we're, what we're wanting to do with this is we're wanting to broadcast that journey to sort of share it with everyone, in many ways, to soften the blow for yeah. ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it's therapy, right? Yeah. It's, it's therapy. It. And so in many ways, who's the therapist? So each month, one of us is going to be the therapist, yeah. where we're going to host it, and we're going to help yeah. the other through that yeah. journey. Yeah, that you, you've journey. got some baggage, because yeah. you're, you're doing it. I'm doing month. it. Yeah. I'm doing it this month. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but he told me I'm doing it this month. So this month I'm doing it. But beyond that, there is no theme. There's no current theme mm -hmm. apart from the fact that this is a journey of what's coming in, what's going out, what we've got our eye on, what mm -hmm. we're enjoying. We'll keep it to hopefully under an hour, maybe. We'll try and keep it under 40 minutes. Because we initially had said what we're going to do, and we were going to break it into three yes. parts, weren't we? And we're going to talk about watch news industry. We're going to say oh, new releases, yep. what we want, do a brand. Yep. And we just thought, actually, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because, well, I mean, when, when I drew up in it's terms back. of thinking, what should we do? I actually put in brackets when you said, oh, I'll talk about your journey in watch purses this week or yeah. the last two months. <laughs> I put in brackets, yeah, this could take two hours. Yeah. And so well, no, we just, just get to, rid of just, everything else. Just to put the context, we had a call last week for an hour and talked about the the, the, the dilemma you faced. Because mm -hmm. you faced a, a crazy dilemma mm -hmm. that very few in the in the world will, you know, well, in fact, a lot of watch lovers face at different levels, it's fair to say, at different yeah. um, prices or, or, you know, price levels. But it's a dilemma we all face. And we, 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 we basically had that chat for an hour and then we're like, hey, you know what? This is what this pod, this series is going to have to be. There's always something on the mind. There's always something in the heart, and and that's what's happening. So, I hope that's clear. <laughs> it may not be, but anyway, we're going on a journey. We're going on a watch journey. Once a month, we're going to get together and chat, and we're we're going to go away at times as well. And this first year is just going to be an experiment. It's also worth just covering off how we know each other, because of course, some people uh, on the channel have already seen your face. Yeah, sadly. I mean it's Jesus, it's not God, a sorry. Good place to look at. Depends what time. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, you can watch the episode with Pete on the two watch collection. So Pete was kind enough to come in and talk to me in my old place about his two watch collection. There is no such thing as a static two watch collection, as we're going <laughs> to no, no, find no, out. Yeah. Um, we actually met on a on a trip. So yeah. we met actually. As much as I'm on the press side, I'm in watch press. Mm -hmm. You're in sports media. Yeah. We actually met each other on a press trip as client invites, right? Yeah. You know, I don't often get them. Well, I don't know. That's like the first one I've had as well. Actually, I think so. Yeah, I think it is. First yeah. brand, but if, yeah. if, if, if Bijou and I are going to have to take well, you on a trip. But it was an AP trip to yeah. last year, yeah. early last year. Was, was it? it last year? Maybe the even year two before, years ago. Yeah, maybe year two years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bloody hell, to Glen yeah. Eagles, which to this day was one of my absolute favourite trips that yeah. I've ever been on. Um, and actually it was Vanessa who was the boutique manager here in London at Gege for many years, mm -hmm. who I met there. Wonderful, wonderful woman. Yeah. And, and a story I always tell because Jajera are getting some great momentum at the moment, but a couple of years ago, no one was really looking at them. 
And by the way, guys, in this pod, in this series, we're going to try and be as no holes barred as possible. This is not sponsored by anybody. Uh, we only have our reputation on the line. Well, that, <laughs> that's that's no, why it's easy. We can there just, is no reputation we can just to lose. do whatever we want. Yeah. Yeah, we're so we're going to be completely honest about yeah. what, everything. It's, it's honestly, as far as we can be, we're going to be totally honest. And, you know, Vanessa, I met years ago at Gigi, and she was, you know, it's fair to say, the watchers weren't flying out the door. She then got the opportunity to join AP House, mm -hmm. which opened in London, and the, the doors were being knocked down. Yeah. For people coming in. Yeah. You were one of them I and I was, I was one her of them. first client. Well, yeah, I was the first person. It's a crazy story because I literally buzzed the buzzer. I wanted to see the code 1159. Um, was oh, like, God. where oh, no. do you what see it? You where do I go? Because, you know, everyone was like ripping it to shreds online. Yeah. And I always think from a house like AP, yeah. they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And also how they make watches is usually stunning and incredible. So I was like, it can't be as bad as everyone's saying it. And you need to see watches in the flesh, I think. You need to hold them and see them. So decided to go into town. I just thought, oh, where the hell is this AP house? Didn't even know you needed to book. Hard and to I see from that. the road. Yeah, hard to see from the road. And then it was that the... moment where, do you push the buzzer? Do yeah, you yeah, not yeah. push the buzzer? Yeah. Have you made your appointment? Yeah, and I'm not the guy yeah. normally to be that, to push the buzzer. I'm usually the sort of shy going, <laughs> actually, uh, I'm not supposed to be here. I'll move on. I just thought, oh, sod it, I'll push the buzzer. And they were like, what? why have you pushed the buzzer? As in, I just thought I could see the code 1159. They just sort of said, oh. Just so you happens. might be the only bloke that's ever buzzed that bu buzzer mm -hmm. on New Bond Street asking yeah. to see a code 1159. Suddenly there's a dude, yeah. guys, we've got someone outside, yeah. he's buzzing, <laughs> you want to see a code 1159. Christ, let the man in! But, but the story from there was that I was wearing my FP Jean Elegant mm -hmm. at the time. And mm -hmm. so, um, because I wore that watch all the time, and uh, yeah, went up and it just so happened. Vanessa had just started, started. she was brand new, um, and then Sandra was there with her, who was also brand new, and mm -hmm. we just ended up chatting for like, an hour and a half and I think she then realized I was a bit of a watch geek yeah. and she obviously recognized the elegant straight away mm -hmm. and obviously that's such a quirky amazing <laughs> yeah. watch she knew you were indeed uh, yeah and so then we just bonded completely and um and she said oh, it was really nice having f you being the first client I was there like going, what, what am I doing this place this is so incredible like above my pay grade mm -hmm. also above you know, just in terms of how beautifully set out that place is but mm -hmm. she made me feel so comfortable I didn't feel like you know, you sometimes work, walk into these boutiques and it can be a bit stuffy and mm -hmm. a bit like sort of, what are you doing in here mm -hmm. wearing those trainers? And like, yeah. you know, there's a little bit of it and you feel a bit AP House uneasy. House is the opposite of that. 100%. In fact, in if London, you walk 100%. in in a formal uh, setup, they're like, oh, this doesn't yeah. feel quite right. Yeah. They, they, are, they flip the, the coin on its, yeah. on its head. So, all so warm, so lovely in mm -hmm. there. And yeah, I mean, and then obviously I think COVID sort of happened mm. and the watch industry went mad mm. and then they became you just couldn't get a meeting with them at all with anyone. And so, I, I, you know, timing, ironically, with watches is everything. And <laughs> I managed to time that. Yeah, and so Vanessa then brought us together. Well, she said, she, so, so we both love golf. We didn't know each other before this trip mm -hmm. to Glen Eagles. And there were press on press trips. Of, well, this wasn't a press trip, this was a client trip. Because we both um, we both have the same watch, mm -hmm. which we'll come to in a moment. Um, but she, before we went, she was like, "There's a guy." I felt like we were almost yeah. on a blind date. Yeah. She's like, "There's a guy. I want you to meet. He's he's in room two five three. Here's the You're key in card. room two five three as well. Times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put the hat on the door yeah, upside yeah. down outside. Come yeah. up to ten. Uh, he'll let you in. He's oiled up. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. She was like, "No, there's a guy you're going to get on really, really well with." And um, and 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 actually, I think we were no, we weren't playing together in the golf uh no we weren't in the, in the force no. together but it was just the best trip i've yeah. ever 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 been on yeah. really i and mean it, you, you took the words out of my mouth by the way I, I met up with tim from subdial last night mm -hmm. and he said oh how, did, how do you, you and justin know each other and i said well, actually it was a bit of a setup <laughs> i remember was, vanessa yeah. saying to me there's a guy you'll get on really really well with yeah. him and usually when that happens in the past, I'm thinking, mm. oh, mm. you know, it is like when you're back there's a lot in of England there's a lot of and thinking, someone says, oh, I've got a mate. And yeah, you're like, it's a Tinder oh. It's a Tinder Yeah, yeah, it's and you are a bit like, Tinder. and then usually it's not right. Usually you're like, you thought that was the guy, for, that, that was the girl or guy for me. No. Whereas I was like, no, you are the guy for me. I, I was like, investors are really right. It was at Glen Eagles reception yeah. where we were surrounded by pictures of um, Sean Connery, Nick Faldo, yeah. um, Barack Obama. And, and there we were. We had a moment. We yeah. locked eyes in front of that reception desk. <laughs> Even to, my friend Tom, Tom Coombs was <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. And I remember we took a photo. As sad as it is, we took a photo of the three watches together. Yeah. The 15202s. And, uh, and from that moment on, it was just yeah. fantastic. And I haven't been able to get rid of you on WhatsApp. You're a bit like TGE. You're a bit like <laughs> Tim Tim Green. A bit like James Green. Um, 
uh, who I can't get rid of on WhatsApp. You know, these guys, you, 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 and you're so right, you know, sometimes you get teed up, like, you know, my mum will say, there's, there's, this, there's a guy at the office at yeah. a law firm, loves watches, would love to talk to you sometime. You go and meet them and you're like, oh, this is great, but you immediately switch off when they reference that first watch mm -hmm. or the way they mention it. And you're like, oh, no, immediately you're like, no. For one reason or another, yeah. you're like, oh. But I, <laughs> the first thing you said was an FPG on. I was like, oh, shit, this guy's in, in real no, deep. deep. Yeah, yeah, in trouble. <laughs> yeah, he's as in as trouble. we all get to, in real trouble, yeah. Um, so that's that's our story. That's our story thus far. I mean, we might fall out throughout the year. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, I mean, it's and, and actually, you haven't spent might, much time with me. So there so. might just be the one episode. And if there is, <laughs> please do rip into us in the comments. These guys have fallen out. There's no more to come. Yeah. We should comment on the watches, shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. We should comment on the watches. So um, both 15 202s. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like the scariest of moments because um, I'd for years and years been knocking on the door. You know, work-wise, I'd, 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 I'd fallen in love with the watch. To me. We've talked about it before, but I'm, I'm a sucker for the icons. And mm -hmm. to me, with the 2121 movement inside, um, the 39 mil case, the, it just it just was something that really spoke to me. And um, and I've been knocking the door down at AP World before Vanessa had come. And I got the call just before they discontinued it because I'd been pushing back for weeks and weeks, saying I don't have the money, can't can't mm -hmm. make it happen, yeah. can't make it happen. And then um, I got a call from somebody at AP saying, you know you might want to consider coming in this week. Um, and I sort of read that as, I hadn't, I'd had lots of messages, but I'd had no calls yet. Yeah. And I thought, if a call comes in, that is serious, and you need to work it out. And honestly, I remember, I got a ticket, because I parked straight outside the front. I, I, I was that, so scared. That's about, ballsy as well, so walking scared. up New Bond Street, parking yeah. there. Like, got a ticket. And then my biggest worry is, number one, I had four or five cards that were on the go to try and get it across the line. Yeah. And you only allowed two, right? Uh, well, I think I. Are you now two? I think yeah, I used two. So I, used, two, I, I yeah. maxed out With on your the Amex. I maxed out on the Amex. Yeah. And then put the business card through as well. Yeah. And then my worry was, oh, shit, I couldn't pay for the parking ticket. <laughs> that was my biggest worry. <laughs> that was my biggest worry. And and I, I took as soon. Jess was there. You remember Jess? Yes, who was there yeah. for a while. He's no longer there. Yes. I just looked at it, and she even got a photo of me putting it on. And it was one of those seminal moments. I haven't. To me, I hadn't bought a new watch, and hadn't had my name in the book mm -hmm. ever before. I really? certainly have really spent, never never. So I've always, always bought, bought pre-owned. Pre wow. I I I I'd never um, <clears throat> spent so much, mm -hmm. and I'd never yeah. been so scared about yeah. spending so much. Yeah. And even to this day, I still, you know, I don't reference it. I wouldn't want to mm -hmm. reference it. I mean, we're referencing it. We're not going to reference how much, but publicly, in, in you know, to friends, to, to others out there in the world, it's 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 not a nice thing to have to say how much because it feels it's still mad. quite deep. It's mad. It's You know, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. Uh, despite if you're I, not millionaires. No, no, no. Which we're not. We're not. And that's the, and, the madness. And, and that's all. the key thing I think we need to reference here, guys, is that basically, um, you know, we're both in media and we both love sport, actually. Yeah. Um, and we both love watches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we also, and honest to God, I, 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 my folks have no interest in, in watches and I, 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 I just want, I, I literally scrapped around for years trying to make something happen in watches. And it's, it's, it's just been this amazing journey where it's been incremental over time. Watch and it's the same as watch journey. It's yeah. been the same for you in, in, in commentary and tennis mm -hmm. and football. So I feel like just to make it clear, you know, we hadn't had anything handed to us, mm -hmm. you know, and we don't want it to seem like that, especially talking about brands that we're talking about. Yeah. Because it is quite like a, ooh. And I think with both of us, it's where all of our money now has gone. So it's everything. everything. Not a penny is Not outside. a penny is outside. I don't, I don't have a pension. I don't have anything. Nothing. It's in, all in fact, gone. I don't know if you've got to do your self-assessment, which I've got to do this month. And the accountant, <laughs> Julie. You've got to budget by month. Yeah, you've got to, yeah. You've got a few days. We've done it. Yeah. Julie, if you're listening, I can't pay it. I can't your pay it. Julie. <laughs> well, my account is so, called Julie as well, so oh, it's, it, maybe we've got the same account. <laughs> yeah. she's, ba she's amazing. So basically what we're saying is we're all in on watches. We're not rich men. Yeah. Um, although saying although that, it looks, although it looks we are like richer that. than many. Many, many, many. Yeah. And we're very grateful for that. Um, Benji's, this, Benji's this clawing at the door. Hello. Benji's come. Hello. And, and so basically, you know, and, 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 and of course these watches in particular now discontinued, went nuts last year, the year before last. And so they suddenly did become something a bit punchy, <laughs> seriously punchy price wise. Well, because my journey with this was, as we're going to get to, actually the timing, this was the one watch I feel where I've got the call. I never thought I'd get the call mm -hmm. as early as I did and it took, you know, I won't go into how long it took, but as in it, when the call came, I actually had exactly that amount of money that I was not sure what to do with. It was during COVID and I was like, do I invest it? Do I, and I was actually looking to buy an AP, actually Code 11, Bill Zali, online mm -hmm. in the secondary market. Mm. Which one? And, it was the time, actually it was the time, it was a chronograph black dial, um, one of the early ones, but someone was selling it really, you know, low. Mm. And so I was sort of tempted and 
I just had that amount, almost that, so it was the first time ever where I had that call and was like, you won't believe this, this just fits perfectly. I've got the, the cash ready. Yeah. I, I didn't know what to do with that. That was all I had, mm -hmm. that was all my savings, but as in mm -hmm. at least I had the savings mm -hmm. there. Um, so you couldn't have paid the train ticket to get to, no, yeah, to, yeah. to, 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 to Bond Street. Whereas right? the other watches that we'll get onto, <laughs> when the calls come through, yeah. I've been like, this is the worst timing. And it's funny you mentioned the tax because with FP Jean now, mm. having got that call, mm. so, let, shall I get into the story with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, with this as well, 15202, for me, it changed the watch world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is still like nothing else as well. I mean, mm. the only downside is that with the theft in London, it's it's so, people see it, but yeah. as in, I just think it's the perfect watch and hype watches as well and icons. I think sometimes there is too much hype. Well, and thankfully, they don't live up it to seems it. Like, this one does. It seems like those that were, were hyping yeah. have moved on in the last couple yes. of months. So yeah. while the value's taken a huge hit, yeah. In many ways, I feel much better about it now. Either way, spending that amount of money mm -hmm. on a watch is madness mm -hmm. in terms of, mm -hmm. but as we said in that two watch collection, it is buying art. It's yep. it's yep. owning something that someone is, the, 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 high, the highest point of their game is, mm -hmm. they've changed this one, they've changed the watch industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone like an FB Jean is in, as you know, uh, George Daniels said to him, yep. you are now, you know, the beacon is over to you as probably the, the greatest watchmaker. Mm -hmm. You're buying, something that is from arguably the, the, the greatest watchmaker. And not only is he amazing at what he does with the insides of watches, mm -hmm. I think his des design ethic and, and whatnot is also just on point. It's just special, yeah. so special and so unique. Yeah. Um, and I know, again, they've been hyped now, whereas in the, but I think rightly hyped, but. Uh, in many yeah. ways, looking back to that two watch collection, so you had your, your Jean that you've yeah. got. And which, then this one here, yeah. Um, which you got at the Paris Boutique a couple of years yeah. ago. In many ways, you've got the, maybe the greatest living watchmaker there in Jean, and you've got mm. the greatest sort of designer of all yes, time in, 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 in the AP. Yeah. Right, Pete, we were just going to move on to um, <laughs> the focus of the first two episodes, maybe even the first three episodes, but the dilemma you faced in the last couple of weeks. Tell us how it got to this point, what it is, and what you've done about it. You mean the FP journey? The FP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, I went there. Someone had to. Someone um, had to. Well, I, I reckon. I'll, I'll, look, I'll take. I'll take it. I feel like we need the sort of the bit in. I don't know whether Brit can do it with the take you back in back time. Back in time. You know, when, the waving. Because I think. I think the one thing. I don't know. One thing we really want to make clear is that that we know how incredibly privileged we are mm. to even have the money mm -hmm. to be able to spend. Us, even though with all of our money's going into watches, mm -hmm. just to be able to have a fifteen two hundred two. To be able to spend that amount of money on a luxury item is is one crazy, but yeah. two, just how lucky we are, like yeah. to, to be able to do that. Look, we both work really, really hard, so we're, we're both. So, I think I would like to go back to right at the very beginning yeah. of my watch journey because <laughs> yeah. I think it's relevant. Yeah. Um, this is my first ever sort of proper watch, but my first um, a Tag F1, mm -hmm. and basically I remember my mum and my dad being like, right, this is gonna be your birthday and Christmas present combined. Mm -hmm. And I remember in Goldsmiths down in Exeter, which mm -hmm. I'm from, it was 175 pound, this one. It was on sale because they were discontinuing it mm. and it was massively reduced. But that, to have that spent on me was huge. So I, and as a kid, I was 13 when I got this, worried in mm. terms of thinking, God, they've spent that much money. I've got to really look after this mm -hmm. and like, I can't believe they spent so much money on me. Did you wear it the whole time? I wore it the whole time. And you, and you can see um, it's all faded around. Uh, and ghost, I think I said, ghost bezel. Yeah, ghost bezel. And so <laughs> like, there wasn't a photograph with me without that on. It was just 24-7, mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. took it off for probably about, maybe even 20 years, I'd say. It, mm. it went a long, long time. Good proportions um, on there. Small case, 34, small, yeah, 33. 30, I think it's 34. I mean, 34. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> But as in a, yeah, and a great cool. lime green, it's almost, yeah. well, did it come out like that? Or yeah, was that, yeah, that what that, it was that's, originally? that's what it was originally. It's not, it's yeah, not it's, it's a sort of loom dial and never had any issues with it. Obviously, God, they were ahead of their time because the, the full loom dial is now becoming a big, like, big thing. Yeah. Like Bell and Ross and others are doing just a full yeah. loom dial. So yeah. no, they were ahead of their time. I, I, I remember like Natalie Ambru Imbruglia had it. I remember seeing her. Having, it was obviously that's a unisex. That's a great watch, reason to buy great it. Great reason to buy it. But as in, it's just, it was a I don't know, it's now quite a classic, that sort of tag F1. But anyway, then the, the other time that I sweated, because it was interesting you said about sweating with the AP yep. uh, and, and the 15202, and this was a rare time that actually spending that amount of money was a rare one where I was like, oh, actually, I was just ready. But the time I sweated even more the first time was buying the, the Chaumet. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, 
I show I made Dandy Slim, it's got Zenith inside, Zenith movement inside, and yeah, it was one of those where I probably got done hook, line, and sinker by, and went in with my ex girlfriend <laughs> at the time. And <laughs> did she one, take you down the path? Yeah, and it's all like, they brought the champagne out and all of that, <laughs> but as in. But as in, I, I just love the the rotor on it and how yeah. it moves. And, uh, did you actually go out and say, "I'm buying that Show Me today," or did you find that in the boutique and you're like, "Hey, that's that's lovely." So I was sort of I did the thing that all watch kids did maybe ten years ago, and you know, bought GQ Watch Edition and all of that, yeah, and, yeah, just yeah. Did, and went through all the watches. And, and you saw I, it ju I just really liked. Again, I, I, as you know, I like something that's a bit different. Yeah. I think watches you want them to be unique. Yeah. No one else has them something that stands out. And so at the time, obviously, even back then, sort of Rolex was the one that everyone went to. And mm. I, I kind of thought, well, no, actually, I think I want something that's a bit more unique. And I, I don't know, I, I love a thing on it, you know, the little the little, the blue on the side. Um, yeah, there's just lots of little touches on this watch that I think are quite special, special and unique. Yeah, yeah. And I think the fact that the Zenith, cabochon, the Zenith, cabochon, Zenith made the movement, so yeah. as in, I think, you know, as we know, Zenith's great movement Very cool. makers. Very cool. So, but I went in there, I basically said, I think at the time, I, th I think I said I had like two grand to spend, that's what I'd given myself. Mm -hmm. I said for the first time I get on TV, I will mm -hmm. treat myself to a watch. And then exactly sort of, what can I spend two grand? And that was loads of money for me at the time. Yeah. I didn't really, stretching it. That I think came out, I think they took, it was, it's, the retail was about six and a half. Mm -hmm. And I think they gave it to me for about four and a half. Mm -hmm. But that was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, like I didn't have that much, like in terms of what I was paying, couldn't really, my, I drove a banger of a car. Like, it's nuts with what I was we doing. Do well, we yeah. do it to ourselves sometimes. Yeah. Because you do get the joy, obviously, when you put it on every day. You get the joy when, you, when you walk out the door uh, yeah. of the boutique. But we really put ourselves in some holes. Yeah. And and I think I think that's something that people don't talk about very often is, is is where the um, where the hobby, yeah. where the passion, um, yeah. where the obsession, then becomes potentially toxic, because we've been in a situation. We're both in situation right now yeah. where we're all in. Like yeah. you're at the table, you're in yeah. Vegas. It's the last flight home. You're going to miss it unless you win this next hand, and you're all in. Yeah. And you you're, you're then left at sea. You're like, how yeah. do I make this work? So it's kind of fascinating to me how we, why we do this to ourselves. And I think the journey with that watch in particular, because that was the first time where, okay, look, I worried about my mum and dad spending that money mm -hmm. previously. That was the first time where I was like, all of my money was going on it. Yeah. But what ended up happening, I mean, I sweated and worried for about a, a year, but every time I looked at my wrist, mm -hmm. I wore it all the, all the time almost, um, you know, just the second style is mesmerizing. And every time I looked at it, I did think, right, you've got to be now good enough to be someone who can wear this watch. Mm in your career, you've spent that much, you now need to work to be able to be a person who could wear one of those watches. Yeah. It helped it me in a, a way, driver. it was a it good was driver. A driver. Yeah. And, but it was, there was a lot of fear, a lot of worry in terms of what am I doing? Um, and it will now, those two watches will always, always stay in my collection mm -hmm. um, because they were first sort of, they were like big moments. I, I think I told you about the feeler watch which was actually my first watch mm. years Did ago. Did you lose that? Tim Henman, yeah, on the beach. And I got given a watch by Tim Henman as well when I was, an Adidas watch that I cherished. I don't know what happened to that, but as in <laughs> first proper watch was the tag that, mm. I, you know, that I've kept. Um, and I wore just 24 seven. But anyway, so we met up for coffee, didn't we? Yeah. About, about a month ago, maybe. Yeah. And, um, and you, you had an effect on me because you were like, hey, Pete, look at my watches, and you showed me this incredible <laughs> disco AP, and yeah. um, you know now the Tado Ando, Bulgari, like just insane, unique. Um, they're, they're geek chic, as I was saying before. Watches that <laughs> like, yeah, watches that, that no one else is going to have. That disco, no one knows that that's an AP and, until you see it up mm -hmm. close. In fact, it's designed by Genta as mm -hmm. well. It's, it's, you had an effect on me because I then went right. You know, I want to get in, go more back into those sort of niche watches mm -hmm. and. I sold a big piece, but basically what happened at the back end of last year, AP House came through and Vanessa and the gang were incredible because I basically was thinking, I'm getting married end of April. Because this is the other key element, guys, yeah. is that this man is getting married. He's organizing the stag. We, yeah. we, we, we were chatting about the stag before we started filming. Yeah. And um, so you've got obligations. I've got, well, yeah, especially to my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have got. Yeah shit to sort out and to pay for and it's a big wedding as well so like, the last thing you need is to be buying is to be watch. called by ap house yeah or by fp jean in paris yeah about anything at this stage yeah so spoke to the start of the year 
obviously wanted a 50 year anniversary piece, you know, 50 year. Uh, obviously, my fiance is bored of me talking about watches yeah. all the time. So you've, but, you've pulled the old strategic play, yeah, bring but, her into but the fold. But she, she now does appreciate it because I think whenever you have a partner that loves something, mm -hmm. you get into it more. So she now understands it a lot more mm -hmm. and she's now got into watches a bit mm -hmm. more, not loads, but she now understands what a Royal Oak is. It's a bit like Brit who's filming here today. Yeah. She's suddenly Brit's going to go on her own watch. So I'm interested in, uh, <laughs> in these things. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, you know, earning the 1522, so yeah. I mean, uh, Ali then was like, actually, I would love to own a Royal Oak. She could yep. see what it meant. And so yep. to be able to have the same Royal Oak together mm. and possibly have it on our wedding day together. Mm -hmm. But so we were like, oh, you know, what can you do? And this one in particular, I mean, it's just, I, I love what they've done with it. Then that phone call came through yep. with AP House. Yep. Back, back end of December, because Vanessa had said, oh, look, probably can't get in the 50 year anniversary. Um, and then lo and behold, this beauty came up, which means, you know, we can do a his and hers. Sort of requested this. Okay. Um, so it wasn't a surprise. You were sat, you were not sat at a table at AP House with your no, fiance, no, yeah. Vanessa, and a new yeah. watch in front of you thinking, yeah. what has what, happened here? Yeah. So what but happened? You knew this was happening. The phone call, Vanessa flashed up on the, and usually, as I said, when that had happened in the past, when for the 15202, mm -hmm. sheer excitement when yes. I saw her phone. Or I actually had a missed call. I, yes. I missed the call and sort of saw it and went. But I also, I, there was disbelief because I'd, that hadn't happened to me before. And yes. I was like, no, I, I can't get the yep. 15202. That's, that's madness. Like, I, I won't be <laughs> getting that. Uh, and so then when that happened, it was like, oh, sheer excitement, just sheer delight. And kind of, I mean, I took a couple of friends with me actually when I went and picked that up. up. And they were like, I've never seen someone so excited, <laughs> so like giddy and all of that. Um, with this one, mm -hmm. when the, the phone rang and I, I looked at the phone, I, my first reaction was like, <laughs> because I then knew that that was like, right, um, Obviously, it was gonna. It's Ali's, so yeah. that's my partner. Mm -hmm. She, she, you know, had a set amount of money set by for it, mm -hmm. but we were sort of planning this to be part gift for me. Part you gift, for the yeah. I, I well. contributed to it, it, it to a bit of it, uh, but as in, but yeah, it was Ali's money that yep. was paying for it. But it then meant she was up against it to pay for the for mm -hmm. her part of the wedding as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. and having that big wedding around the corner it just meant that everything would then be super super tight. Yep. So we, we, we managed, we had a long chat, so we're we ready, decided. We're ready, we're ready, how long ago was this? This was a couple months ago. This was, and this was towards the end of December. So I thought the 50 year anniversary piece was not gonna happen, yes. which I was completely, you know, I didn't, but they were so amazing at AP House mm -hmm. to, to put us forward for it. Mm -hmm. So blessed to own, you know, 50 year anniversary piece, just yep. absolutely amazing for, for, for as a Royal Oak. And the key element for anyone who isn't aware of that is that it might look like um, a Royal Oak from, from the modern era, but actually the rotor has a 50 engraved on the case back. So yeah. the new caliber, new AP caliber inside there, uh, don't ask me what that caliber is called, um, but it's not the same as this. And yeah. it's got a 50 on the rotor just for watches from 2022, which is pretty cool. And I think we did have a chat briefly. You're like, just, I think I'm in trouble because this is an important watch. Yeah. And, 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 and literally we're not going to have another chance to get it. And first, you know, first real proper watch for, for Ali. Ali. And the comments that I've had from various <laughs> people was in like, what well, watch, watch does your, you your, know, what your, have you bought your, your partner, yeah, yeah, yeah. fiance? And in many ways, this could be the most strategic play of all time. And anyone out there watching um, who's experienced this before, please do leave your, your experience of this. Has the man bought his partner a watch just so you, you can have her closer to you in the future <laughs> to understand when you walk in through the door with that yeah. Patek box down the line, that Vacheron box, that IWC box, she's going to feel a little bit more related to what you're doing. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, and I think, <laughs> I, I, but I also think, you know, she'd known the experiences that I'd gone through, through when you get that call and when you go in and it's there, it's so exciting yes. and, and you are treated, particularly AP House, like a like some sort of rock star. Yeah. And, um, and she obviously then had that experience and mm -hmm. got to go through it all. And I then thought, right, well, to actually fund the wedding, I will need to sell a big piece that I had, yep. um, which I was umming and ahhing. And, and you partly, when I met up with you in that mm. cafe and you had all these amazing watches, mm. I then thought, okay, actually, I'm going to sell that piece mm -hmm. because that will help me fund the wedding. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be less sweaty, less sort of <laughs> feeling tight and nervy, thinking, what have we done? Yep. And so sold it, sold a piece, uh, all was good. And I actually said to you as in, oh, like actually this podcast will work really well now because I've got a little bit of 
money from that piece mm -hmm. that that is a little bit makes it a little bit more flexible that you're I can maybe liquid. go. And, Are you a bit yeah, liquid? Was yeah, I had a bit of liquid to, to go and you know look at subdials watches yeah, yeah, and yeah. see all the different. But they don't they, like they're not sponsoring us by the way, but they're, they're just amazing. Subdial not sponsoring yeah. us, but shout out to Tim Green yeah. over there and the team because in a very, very honest, authentic way. To, uh, Pete and I have both had experiences buying and selling, and they've just really gone above and beyond to look after us. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pete, personally, yeah. you know, I, I said actually earlier that the 3705 ceramic pilot from IWC, the very first pilot watch and ceramic, Tim helped source for me, with me, and basically bridged me until I could pay entirely for, which is unheard of in the secondary market. I mean, not to say that's the model that they operate, but he was just, incredibly kind yeah. and um so yeah shout out to the team there 100 percent. and but also the watches they get in there i think are, are like nothing else and that well, disco that, th 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 that's one that i've done a little video on recently actually just talking about the buying experience because this disco Volante, benji likes it benji likes it and you yeah. know what he actually um he, he sort of matches like the uh, the colorway <laughs> that yellow gold on his sort of autumnal fur <laughs> Uh, it kind of works, doesn't it? Benji, you like that? And also the movement. I mean, it's, yeah, anyway, we won't go into that now, but this was recently bought bought, bought from Subdial and um, yeah, just absolutely loving it. And I know this is one of Brit's favorites as well. So um, yeah. that's the only downside, I think, to this podcast is that we've got similar taste. That is similar dangerous. In terms of- So you can't share anything now that you're really keen on because <laughs> yeah, I'll say, hey, it, we're yeah. going to go and get it. Next, next episode, we're going to go and try and get it. But um, one part I've forgotten to include was that in December, actually, mm -hmm. Um, and it was a funny, I'd been meaning to message F. B. John at the, the house in Paris, which is where I'd got the Divine from, mm -hmm. to say, oh, any, any, what's the update with um, the F. B. John automatic sport model with the yellow dial? Um, I'd been meaning to, I'd been, I kept saying, right, I need to message them just to see. What was the, because what was do the I need update? To park what what update do you need? Do I need to park? <laughs> well, I was just thinking, is it possible next year? Is it likely to come in? Because mm -hmm. if so, I need to park a load of money and I need to save and I need to make yep. sure I don't buy any other watches. Okay. They, but then on the day, I'd actually gone, right, I'm going to do it this morning. I woke up that morning mm -hmm. and FB Jean, the, the boutique had said, sorry, you're not going to be allocated any watches next year. They've mm -hmm. already been allocated. And I hadn't even sent the email, so I was like, oh, that's really weird. That's it's, weird. I respi replied straight away to it. I would actually just about a right to you. I don't usually write to them very often. So this was December 2022. This was December 2022. Literally a month ago. And so I then thought, okay, you know, oh, that's a bit of a shame, but obviously Good. You, no one else can. So I'll, <laughs> I'll then, then met up with you. You then showed me this disco crazy thing and all these other little well, watches that you'd got. I think what I was saying, and I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the ethos of it was, because I've got this box, this 10 slot box for a Mulquin, which I'm blown away by. Um, and again, they've not sponsored the podcast, <laughs> but lovely guys there, um, Michael Luther and the team. And I sort of, I think I said, you know, this is kind of my max. Like I, yeah. I, I, as crazy as it sounds, 10 watches, lunacy, lunacy, complete lunacy, but I'm going to use that as a framework for not being um, greedy and, and mm -hmm. excessive. And I mean, we're excessive already, but not going <laughs> way, way over like 10 watches. Yeah. And then if you bore that down to think, what are those 10 watches? Really, what are they? Are they those watches that are just going to get the, the heart pumping, mm -hmm. blow you away, um, th th do it for you and for yourself only? Yeah. Because I think that the danger is we all get caught up in, I'm buying this because I've been offered it, I'm buying it because mm -hmm. um, I feel like I have to get it, or someone else's, or there's is. And, and so I'm trying to dilute it down to the core essence of why yeah. you're buying this. and. That's where we're at. So you have, in fact, got rid of quite a lot of things, well, right? Well, so, had to. Well, well, yeah, I'm in the process of. Saw you, and I loved what you were saying, and I just thought, actually, and having sold that big piece, I then thought, oh, actually, I've got a little bit of cash that I mm -hmm, can play with mm -hmm. and whatnot, and you inspired me a bit with what you were doing. I thought, I want more of those niche that no one else has got type of watches. I bought a Breguet tradition um, from a mate, again, from, uh, and amazing watch, beautiful watch. Yeah. It, it did stop working on me. I might have overwhelmed <laughs> it. I don't know what happened, yeah, yeah. but anyway. Um, but I was then like quite happy as in, I was sort of, okay, I've got a bit of money for the mm -hmm. rest of the year. Mm -hmm. If something happens, only a bit, not a lot, but mm -hmm. a bit, that we can then have this lovely mm -hmm. watch journey. We can do this great podcast and <laughs> each month I might say, oh, I'm interested in this and probably won't buy it, but I've got a little bit of yeah. cash to possibly go on this amazing watch journey. And then sat in, uh, I was actually sat in, um, oh God, wherever, somewhere in central London with my fiance, email comes through from FB Jean. I'm like, oh, it's Bit odd that they'd said <laughs> it wasn't getting any, and yeah. then it's there, as in saying, We have this FB Jean automatic mm -hmm. uh, yellow dial yep. for you yep. if you want it. Yep. The price had gone up a lot from what it was two, three years ago. Obviously, his costs, so have you gone up had a lot. spoken to them about this. 
a while ago. So I'd spoken to them about, yeah, probably about two years ago, I'd really? sort of said, I mean, and <laughs> that watch, um, I, I just think the is, we talk about unique watches and not and having a watch that no one else owns mm -hmm. or very few people own mm -hmm. and obviously with an FB Jean there, there's such limited production I think it's 200 watches a year mm -hmm. or something like that uh, I think might, maybe 800 mm -hmm. actually, maybe 800 mm -hmm. watches a year I think and but they're so limited production I think the sport models in particular are really limited so production. we're gonna have to get a photo of this up in mm -hmm. the edit so yeah. people can see what the hell we're talking about yeah. here because it's not one that I'm particularly familiar with but this is not one of the, the, the front runners from a popularity standpoint, yeah. which I love. Mm. And the fact that it's got this um, yellow dial, mm. which can only be described as canary yellow almost, yeah. like canary yellow punch. It's got mm -hmm. some real punch yeah. to it. It's, it's, it's an incredible watch, Yeah, but it's not a watch. If you ever see in the wild, it's a watch you ha you'd have to go over and have a chat with the uh, the owner because it's so, such an oddball. Yes. Yeah. Such an oddball. And the, the other strange thing with FB Joint, you know, every other, place in the market in terms of when they do a, a sports model that's their main popular model mm -hmm. that everyone goes nuts over mm -hmm. and with Jean it's the other way around all of his dress, dress watches are the ones that everyone goes mad over and for me I, I just think why is that and, it, and again it's typical Jean that watch because it's got aluminium that the movement's made of aluminium and it again it's got your seven day power reserve so it, again it's sort of freakish I, I got to hold it and have wear it in Dubai once mm -hmm. and it, it is so light what's it's the, like what's a the case size um, Sorry, oh, the, the case, case material and case size. So the, the case material is titanium. Titanium, but the bracelet. but aluminium because he initially did all aluminium. Mm. Um, the the, the, so the initial sport watch was just completely aluminium, which was crazy, crazy light. But there were, I think, there were issues with issues. Sk skin on aluminium. So I think he he ah. he then decided to go titanium with aluminium. But I mean, again, it's just it's just a bonkers watch. Uh, it's like nothing else you'll see out there. But it's a sports watch, and sadly, as we were saying with these, mm. as in, um, as much as I still think this is the cultural, uh, yeah, it's there's a the danger. Cultural, yeah. You you go into London, yeah, yeah. you are worried. Yeah. You are thinking because yeah. everyone knows what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That only watch geeks know mm -hmm. what it is, and I it think it might catch the eye of a lot of people. <laughs> it will catch the eye of a lot of people, <laughs> but it won't necessarily but they won't convert go to understanding what the value yeah, might be. Yeah, forty-one mil case, you say? 41. No, no, it's just a forty-four. Four, it's forty-four. A, it's a bonkers. But the, the no like lugs, that. Doesn't wear like no that. lugs, so mm. it wears more like a 42. Yep. I actually prefer, you know, I think the sweet spot's about 38 yep. as, a, as a watch, but yep. I think a sports watch, mm -hmm. that yellow, it's mm -hmm. so packs a punch, so packs a punch. And I think, I mean, we were having this conversation with watch collecting, um, Adrian yep. from watch yeah, collecting, yeah. Adrian and he did, he did say something like, oh, that becomes your identity. Yep. Yep. And, and as I say, this, I'll get it out, special occasions, wear it quite a bit, mm -hmm. the 15202, um, whereas that, I could wear all the time yeah um, and that could be my everyday watch because I'm not worried about someone well there might be now if someone's watching <laughs> yeah. this but as in but, bloody but hell, as in, it could be the, but the, that, the ultimate daily yeah, wearer yeah and it's that again <laughs> the ultimate daily wearer so yeah so Tim from Subdial wore, he wore his Langer Odysseus which seeing that in the wild as well is really cool pretty cool new new I've seen it in in the house, mm -hmm. in the Langer house, mm -hmm. but seeing it out being worn, it, it's a great it's watch. A lovely, and again, yeah. it's a similar sort of thing in terms of Langer, again, their dress watches, the mm -hmm. Langer one, mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. But to see someone wear the sports model, and again, mm -hmm. he can wear that everywhere. Yep. No one knows what it is. Yep. So he's not got that fear, mm -hmm. and yet he's got a Langer and a beautifully made watch. So part of me is like, right, that that FB Jean is, is, a, is a similar thing, and it's so funny as well, that <laughs> what you get into, the more further down, this dirty road that you go with the watch industry and, and being into watches. It's funny how dark and sordid, you're like, no, I want an aluminium model yeah. now. <laughs> like, just to steal sports watch is not, that doesn't cut it for me. Yeah, Rolex, you know, it, it's funny how you just get more and more sick in the, in the mind yeah. and you want something more and more different, something more and more unique. And I just think that watch for me hits all of those things. And, mm. and because it isn't a, a Jean mm. hype watch, mm. I don't understand why it's not. I, mm. I, I think it should it should be because I just think what, what are the yellow watches can you buy? There, there aren't really any other, particularly that yellow. There's mm -hmm. nothing that's really known as a mm. yellow watch. I just think it's a really unique watch, and, and, and it's, so, it's so, so that that model had spoken to me before, but in mm -hmm. the with the black dial, I, mm -hmm. I had picked it up yeah. and I'd been like, oh, that is actually really interesting because it's got all the DNA of Jean, yeah. the, the 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 painted mm -hmm. um, Arabic um, numerals, blown up and sort of mm -hmm. in in the same way with the Divin here. Um, super, super 
legible as Azure, mm. um, but the sportiness was just something super, sort of attractive, really attractive. Yeah. Um, um, and Tim said the other day, I thought it was great, you know, you, you, we've moved on from buying, not we, but generally we, I think, out there have moved on from buying boring watches. I think mm -hmm. if you're able to buy something that's a little bit odd, mm -hmm. um, like I can think of some Seiko, like Seiko Monster with a yellow dial that's, mm -hmm. you know, super super punchy i don't know how easy they are to get but not mega bucks i think there was an off i think there was an offshore maybe a year or two ago that had a yellow dial yeah. but but nothing ha ha sticks in my mind anyway as being as punchy anyway that's all the lovely fluffy stuff about, <laughs> about the so watch you, you've and now received this and all email of this. so i've received blue. this email uh, uh, and my fiance just says no straight off the bat and i'm like yeah of course are you with of her when you receive not. the email yeah it was literally on my phone <laughs> And then we're, we're having a nice drink. Apple TV popped up on the big screen, like so she could see the email drop in yeah, the top. Yeah, like I <laughs> just bought that beautiful Brigade tradition, and uh, I was all happy with it. I was wearing it that day, and it was all like, every life was sorted really. And it was just like, oh no, what am well, I well, doing? Well, I don't have well, that money. When like, you told me this was all happening, I then said to you, no, 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 because I think you said, look, no, this is it. I'm done. After this, I'm yeah. done. This is my exit watch. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I said, no, 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 Pete, I'm telling you this is not. And that's why it's important for us to do this because yeah. we'll be able to look back on it and yeah. laugh. So, yeah. so you've now had to offload a few watches and not all of them are here to show, but you, you are selling the Zenith. Yeah, which is, and it's, which this is the, this I think out of all the ones I'm offloading is the, the, the toughest one, the, the one most, that hurts yeah. because it's one of 100. I bought it in Tokyo because it was a boutique edition for being Japan. one of 100. So yeah. it wasn't a, to a Tokyo edition. Ah, okay, but it but was just there's, there's no exclusive. Zenith official boutique in the UK. Mm. Uh, obviously, they mm. watch the Switzerland do, do sell them. Yeah. So I wasn't able to get it, but I, I was at the Olympics for Tokyo and we were in COVID lockdown and we had one day. So it was you had to quarantine for 15, 14 days where you were just bust to go and do your commentary and bus back. You were in complete, weren't allowed to leave your hotel and all of these things. I, I was there 15 days, so it's a tennis commentary. And so I had one day off. And the only, what did I choose to do in my day? <laughs> I'm in Tokyo, this amazing <laughs> place. And I choose to go to the watch district and go to the Zenith boutique um, where they had one. And I'd always wanted one because I just think it's so cool. Yeah. I think you know, the fact that you've got white ceramic on black ceramic, mm -hmm. white ceramics are notoriously tough materials to work with. The white ceramic's polished. The other, the black is more sort of. Did you ever rushed. see Bamford's Laureato with Giro Pirigo? So it's solid white. Super funny cool. you mentioned that. So I wanted either this or that. Or that. Mm -hmm. And I just was a little bit slow on the uptake on the Bamford. Like, and I rang the Bamford uh, place and I actually stupidly, I went into London to try and get the Laureato. And I didn't realize it was only in Harrods that they were selling it, mm -hmm. that the Laureato Ghost, and missed it. And it was so, so I would have had the Laureato Ghost. The Zenith is going. The Zenith is going. Like, <laughs> and if you want to buy it, watch Collecting UK. Well, what, is what in, collecting, yeah, and, and that was yeah. actually something we talked about because yeah. I, I just started, um, well, I listed a watch with them and I was blown away by the experience. And Adrian Hellwood there has been in the industry for years at different auctions, um, different auction businesses. But it's just interesting because as the seller, you mm -hmm. can put it up, you get the entire price at the end of it. Yeah. Um, the buyer pays a 6%, 7% premium on the price and the deal's done, you just connect together afterwards. So it's, yeah. I think they are ruffling some feathers. I think it's quite an interesting, you, you get market price or relative market price yeah. when sometimes selling to dealers, you, you, you're concerned you're not. Yeah. So that's interesting. And that, that's the thing with that. that, if that doesn't reach the price, I can't sell it massively on the you cheap. Put, you put your um, put my reserve, reserve in, in, yeah. But as in, that's the one where the other watches I'm selling, uh, I can just about deal with. Yep. That one I know I'll never be able to get back. Yep. Like it's, uh, uh, even the, actually the, I spoke to the, one of the guys from Zenith and they said, um, from the, in Geneva, and they said they've never seen that watch. They've oh. never come across that watch. So <laughs> uh, it's, it, it'll hurt. There'll be a but, link but it, to the... <laughs> yeah, but, it'll, but at the same time, exactly what you were saying about your, your 10 spaces, spaces in your yeah. watch box, as in I felt, okay, actually getting rid of loads, maybe mm -hmm. that's, that's a good thing mm -hmm. and shortening it all down. But so, yeah. so, so, so this is the first, you, you, you're also doing another, you're selling another. Yeah, yeah, which is actually going today, so that's too late okay. in for everyone. So that's been but sold. That will be sold, yeah. A third? Um, possibly, yeah, okay. possibly a third. But as in, yeah, it's just trying to raise the capital to 
yeah, fun the wedding, to be honest. Um, and, I, and I was in trouble because I rocked up to the wedding itself wearing a new watch and I hadn't mentioned it until the day. Right. And she, okay. I think, honestly, at the at the altar, looked at me and was like, what the hell's that on your wrist? Most there, people are just what, whispering two nothings in there. Which watch was it? It was the 1921, the Vashon. Oh, I mean, that's a stunning. I mean, well, how, how can you be upset about that no, watch? No, no, she wasn't that's upset about it. That she, didn't, well. she obviously, she, she appreciated the design. I had actually, months and months earlier, taken her into the boutique and shown her the pink and the yellow next to each other. And I tried them on. I just wanted to gauge, just just psychologically, just to get a feel for what she thought was more interesting. Not that that was going to sway the whole buying decision, because I'd had my heart set on the yellow. Yeah. And I got the last yellow before it was discontinued at Watch in wow. Switzerland in the UK, which just because most people don't like yellow. But it was just funny that at the at the altar, I didn't expect that moment for me to be. Uh, I I thought she'd be <laughs> nibbling on the earlobe, uh, whispering how good I looked at the 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 the. the, the, the it wasn't as the ring came out, was it? Anderson and Shepherd too. Do you whatever. take the? What are you wearing? <laughs> So it's like, that better not have been expensive. Oh no, it's a Vacheron, they're really cheap. Yeah, they're cheap. <laughs> I know for a fact that I'm sweating over something as well that we'll be discussing in episode three, so um, <laughs> all good. But as always guys, thank you for, for joining. I mean, this is our first stab at the, at the pod and um, please, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment and, and tell us what you thought of the episode. <laughs> the thumbs up. <laughs>